OK, Brad, so let's actually do the numbers to Mars. Because this is the whole goal, right? This is, it's not less about the moon, as we said, kind of boring. But there's a huge benefit of getting into orbit there. But is it really worth it if you want to get all the way to Mars? Okay. We have to look at this. So let's go back. So we need to launch, we're going to launch maybe a one kilogram satellite. Now, in order to get to Mars, we need, firstly, our energy to get from Earth orbit to this point here. Yep. Which is 63 megajoules for a single kilogram. Yep. But now we need this difference to get from here all the way to right there. Now, that ends up, as you said, being actually a really, really big difference, much bigger than the Earth alone. In fact, 340 megajoules per kilogram worth. So you see, quite big compared to just getting out of Earth orbit. So this point, um, we were talking about um, 350 to 400, so it's uh, roughly a 10-15% you know, difference, whereas yeah. previously it was a factor of six. That's right. So now, it's starting to seem a little more marginal to me because it's going to add huge complexity to any mission to have to go to the moon, build mining operations on the moon, purify water, ship it out. There are more things that can go wrong. And if that was going to get you like six times more astronauts, then it might be worth it. But if it's only going to get you an extra one-tenth and you just hire a lighter weight astronaut and yeah, that's <laughs> launch right. from the Earth. I mean, the, you've got the industry on the Earth right away. It's much easier to build things on the Earth when there's... If you need a spare fuse, you can just go down to the local <laughs> hardware shop and buy it, which is not the case on the moon. That's right. So th this is starting to tell me that you know, going via the moon doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's actually maybe not as economical as one may think. You know, when we were talking about with the Apollo program, they were able to get to the moon because they invested that $150 billion to do the technology development, the people time. We're still going to have to spend that on the moon to develop the research, the technology, keeping in mind we haven't dug ice out. We don't know where the water is. We haven't created all that stuff. So bringing the sum of the parts together isn't as simple as saying, OK, well, it's a cost for free. And in fact, there's the same sort of debate with the early Apollo missions that people are talking about constructing a moon spacecraft in Earth orbit or maybe even moon orbit. Yeah. So you can imagine establishing a space station, Earth orbit, another station orbit around the moon and sending shuttles between them. And that's certainly much more energy efficient. But just the number of things that can go wrong, uh, the number of different stages, the, every rendezvous has to work, every space station has to be working, you have to have all the right things in the right place. Uh, it turned, they decided eventually it was much simpler just to build a very, very, very big rocket on the Earth and fire the whole thing right all the way through there. And that's, you know, and, and it worked, but it still took time. Because as you said, even when you're doing a one kilogram satellite or we're adding our 50 kilogram person, it's only a difference of 3,000 megajoules. It's, it's not becoming that big of a difference. Even all of these calculations with water is only 40,000, you know, these aren't being that, it, you know, that big of a difference. Now, as we said with the caveat to the moon, if you do go to Mars, again, presumably if you're not, say, Elon Musk, you want to get back. So we do need to add that energy to get back to that orbit, back to Earth. But again, if we're looking at this, this difference is still quite small compared to this whole distance traveled. And in fact, even when we add the numbers in here, so we have, we're adding our Mars fuel to carry us back. So we have our total to get to Mars, plus only 20 megajoules to get off of Mars to orbit. Mars is actually kind of easy to get off of. Yes, it's not as easy as the moon. It's more massive than the moon, but we know there's a lot of water on Mars. That's right. So that means that, okay, well, there's a lot of water on Mars, and if you've already mastered a technology to do it on the moon, you can do it on Mars. Mars is easier in terms of environmental to do it. And the difference, again, the savings, let's say, just as we can all relate to, isn't as much there for a small satellite, for a human, or even if we do our big 100-day trip. Now, Mars would be longer than 100 days, but just to be consistent, we're only getting a difference of total of about 40,000 megajoules, which again is kind of tiny in when you're spinning 340,000 megajoules worth of energy. So I guess the message I'm taking home from this is that it actually does not make real sense to use the moon as a refueling stop on the way to Mars. It's, it's, it saves a bit of energy, but the sheer level of complexity involved uh, doesn't really make much sense. Um, so if you go to the moon to build a moon base, um, it's going to be for reasons of national pride. Yep. It might be for reasons of learning to 
build long-term bases in the vacuum on the surface of a planet because if something goes wrong on the moon you can get rescue in four days that's whereas right. you're talking about you know six months to get rescue on mars or at, something at like the that. best at case the very scenario, best scenario. Right. so it's um the reasons for doing it are things like that um national pride learning how to do things being able to evacuate easily if things go that's wrong right. But I think the economic argument for using it as a refueling pit on the way to Mars doesn't make sense. That's right. It's not just a straight economic argument. If you already had a moon base for some other reason, then you could take advantage of it to shave a little bit off the costs. Um, but uh, it's um, not really very good. Uh, a moon base, the, uh, producing anything on the moon is going to be much harder and more expensive than producing it on Earth. Exactly, because we already can make it on the Earth. And in fact, if we look at the cost of the fuel itself, so this was the cost for the space shuttle. Nowadays, liquid hydrogen costs about $6 per kilogram, liquid oxygen about 30 cents per kilogram. Now, the space shuttle needed 100,000 kilograms of hydrogen, just external tank, 500,000 kilograms of oxygen. It's only about $750,000. In the scheme of things, that's actually not the cost, right? It's about worrying of saying, all right, I need to uh, go across the ocean, so I'm going to go worry about the extra baggage fee instead of, the hotel and the plane and the food and the time off work. This is kind of the meaningless consequence, especially when we look at, OK, well, we need less on the moon, but we don't really know how much it's going to cost to produce it. It's going to be a lot more, I imagine. <laughs> That's right. We have to create those industries to create it. So unless you want to do it for national pride, unless you want to do it maybe for practice to do it on Mars, which that can translate, and if you have to also be really invested in the Mars idea, right? Imagine you start having things go wrong on the moon, then what do you do now? And so this is kind of the trick with thinking about going back to the moon. It has to be more than just an economical argument to get to Mars if people are really going to invest in this. Now, as we'll talk about when we get to looking at the economics of getting into Earth orbit, while the price of the fuel isn't a big issue, there's a snowballing effect. That's because right. to launch one kilogram into Earth orbit takes about a kilogram of fuel. That's right. But you have to carry that fuel with you in the rocket. So the, the fuel can't even lift itself into space, let alone anything else. So most of the fuel when a rocket takes off on Earth is not to transport the payload into space, it's to transport more fuel for the next part of the trip. That's right. So and you so know, you have to add more fuel. So which... the fuel is there to transport the fuel, which is in turn there to transport the fuel. So if you can shave a bit of fuel off the top, it can actually have a big effect down the whole tree, as we'll talk about later. Exactly. Exactly. So, so maybe the moon makes a bit more sense from that point of view. That's right.